So this morning we um, have Lisa to lead us and uh, David Carver is going to speak to us. So um, I'll pass over to Lisa then to, to open our service. Great, thank you very much, thank you. Well, um, morning everybody, it's lovely to see you all. Um, the words, the opening words from the morning prayer service remind us that we have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his word, to bring before him the needs of the world and to seek his grace so that, so that through his son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Let's pray. Lord, we do seek to praise and give you thanksgiving this morning. Uh, we lift you up, Lord. We do seek your grace. Lord, we pray that we, you would help us to praise you that you'd help us to receive your word and that you'd help us to give ourselves afresh in your service today, Lord. Amen. Amen. Wayne is just going to read some mm -hmm. verses mm -hmm. from Psalm 22 for us as we, we start, and then I'll hand over to Andy and Esther for our first two songs. Thanks. Psalm 22, starting at verse 23. Mm -hmm. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honour him. We bear him, all of you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised, disdained the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but he has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise of the great assembly. Before those who fear you, for I fulfil my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. They who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families and nations will bow down before him. But dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive, posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness to the people yet unborn, for he has done it. Oh, uh, that's a wonderful uh, psalm, the first part of the psalm. It really speaks to us in Lent, doesn't it? And um, gives us a picture of the Jesus suffering on the cross, but then ends in praise to God for it, that he has done it. So... Praise his name. Thanks, Andy and Esther. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're going to sing our first song, which is To God Be the Glory. And we're going to praise God together this morning. Um, and the words are in the chat box if you want to have a look at those. Great. 
Thank you that as his people that you promised to be with us. And so now we pray, Lord, that you'll open our eyes to you, Lord. You'll open our hearts to you. As we come before you this morning, Lord, we, we sing your praise and we ask for more of you, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, cause I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, cause I want to see you. I want to see you. See you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we cry, Holy, 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 Holy. God's word tells us that it's the holy who can see God's face, who can stand in his presence. And it's just amazing to just have that image of the Lord lifted up on high, seated on his throne, the, the pure and shining one, the glorious one. Um, it's just amazing that we can draw close to him as our father and come into his presence. And um, even though we're so far from living up to that holiness ourselves, but we can confess our sins before him and know that he's forgiven all that we've done wrong and that we can stand in his presence. Let me just put the uh, words of the confession in the chat box for you and perhaps we can uh, say them together now. Let's pray. Almighty and merciful Almighty God, God, we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, thought word and deed. deed. We, we have, have not, not loved you with all our hearts. Heart. We, we have, have not, not loved others as Christ loves us. us. We, we are, are truly sorry. sorry. In, In your mercy, mercy forgive, forgive us. Help us to amend our lives, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory and praise of your name. Amen. May God our Father, who by our Lord Jesus Christ has reconciled the world to himself and forgives the sins of all who truly repent, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, 
and grant us the grace and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Amazing. Um, um, Wayne's going to read a few mm -hmm. verses from Matthew chapter 17 for us now, um, and then we'll hand over to David, who's going to share a word with us this morning. So it's Matthew chapter 17, starting at verse 24. Uh -huh. After Jesus and his disciples arrived at Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma tax came to Peter and asked, does your teacher pay temple tax? Yes, he does, he replied. When P Peter came into the house, Jesus was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon, he asked. From whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes? From their own sons or from others? <clears throat> from others, Peter answered. Then the sons are exempt, Jesus said to him. But so that we may not offend them, go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch, open the mouth, and you will find a poor drachma coin. Take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. Thank you. David, perhaps we can hand over to you now. Right. <clears throat> so the the theme that we've sort of been I talked about last week and I'm talking about this week and um, I, is leaning in during Lent, leaning into to what God wants to speak to us. And one of the areas where I think we need to do that and we always need to do it is in terms of, of giving. And while I was thinking about that, this passage came to me, which is a very <laughs> very obscure passage to to link to that sort of theme but there's a something in it that i believe god wants us to hear and it's that that i want to to really talk about so we've got to get an idea of what what is actually happening and jesus because jesus is a rabbi and a teacher with disciples would not have to pay the temple tax that that is the normal normal situation he does not have to pay temple tax. So what's going on here is they're trying to say to Jesus, well, you're not a teacher. You're not a rabbi. Um, and they're interested in discrediting him. Um, so that's the sort of basis of what, what seems to be going on. Um, and they deliberately don't go directly to Jesus. They go to Peter as one of his disciples and they know that Peter as a disciple will not be the typical um, learned disciple but a fisherman who will probably not know the answer to the question so they're being very deliberate in in what they do so they go to Peter and they say to Peter you know does your teacher pay the tax the uh, temple tax and Peter says oh I, I think so I presume so yes um, and we are not told an awful lot about what happens next but I get the impression that Peter is somehow held back and the uh, people who collect the tax get to Jesus and there must have been a conversation but we don't know what it is we don't know what happens but by the time Peter arrives um, and Peter's about, to, it sounds almost as if Peter wants to sort of say, look, it, and Jesus immediately interrupts him because he doesn't want him to say anything. Now, I'm sort of making bits of this up, but you, so you'll have to sort of bear with me, but I'm trying to get an idea and I hit my head around what, what is actually happening. And Jesus says something to him, which we do not understand. We really find it very difficult. And the words he uses is, from whom do the kings of the earth collect customs or poll tax? From their sons or from strangers? And when Peter said from strangers, Jesus said to them, then the sons are exempt. And you're like, hold on a minute. <laughs> what has that got to do with temple tax? Apart from the fact that he was exempt. 
But what he seems to be talking about is something much bigger. He's talking about the kingdom of God. He's talking about the fact that as the son of God, he's exempt. But one of the things that happened with the with this tax is because the rabbis, the teachers were exempt from the tax, the fathers paid. And hold on a minute. This seems to be suggesting that within the kingdom of God, maybe God the Father will pay this tax. It's not clear. Nothing is very clear. But I want to go through the reasons why Jesus shouldn't pay the tax. If we were looking at it, why wouldn't he pay the tax? Well, the first one is the one that we've already mentioned, that traditionally rabbis, teachers don't pay the tax. That's quite straightforward, quite reasonable. The second one, well, what did, is this organization that he's paying money into? Well, it's an organization where he went into the temple and turned over the tab tables and called them a den of robbers. So if it was you and me, we would be looking at the status of the organization that we're being asked to give to and pay taxes into and going, really? You expect me to pay into that? You expect me to do that? Is that the morally the correct thing to do? Do I want them to have money? Especially if I don't have to. <laughs> if there's no obligation on my part to pay. It's a den of thieves. And the third reason, which again is a, very, a reason that we would use quite often is, I haven't got any money. So what does Jesus actually say? He says, we're exempt. I'm totally free to choose what I do in this situation. Totally free. I am not going to be restricted by what people think or what compulsions I have. I'm just going to do what I believe God is, is saying to me. And that is to be generous. It is very simply to be generous. In a situation where he has every reason not to be generous, Jesus chooses to be generous. And he does that. He makes that choice to be generous before he has any money in which he can use to be generous. And I think this is something that we need to be thinking about is the choice to be generous uh, and to have a, a, a generosity of heart is not related to how much money you've got and whether you can afford it. It's something that is part of actually what we're meant to be if we're in the image of God. And we've seen this in, <clears throat> and this is what Jesus is demonstrating. Jesus chooses to be generous to demonstrate goodwill and not to offend. So he says to Peter, okay, take the rod, because we need to see what happens next, and go and catch a fish. And this is not the traditional way that Peter would fish. The normal way Peter would fish would to take a big net, <laughs> catch a lot of fish, go through each one, check if it's got a coin in its mouth. <laughs> but that's not what we're being told. We're told something very specific. Go and catch one fish. When you've caught that fish, check its mouth, take the coin out of its mouth and bring it to me. Well, what happens? Well, God is generous. That's what we find here, that God actually gives double what Jesus needs. Jesus only needs the two drachma in order to pay this tax that he doesn't have to pay, in order to be generous. All he requires is the two drachma, but God is generous. God chooses to be generous. And he takes the, the coin and he 
then what happens? Jesus chooses to be generous. You see how generosity just sort of runs through what is happening here. Jesus chooses to be generous. Jesus decides to pay on behalf of Peter as well as himself. I want us to note then what this means because this, what has happened is sort of almost goes against the grain from our point of view in that Jesus chooses to be generous where really when we look at it, we would choose not to be generous. So we need to look and see the effect. And the, the effect is this, that the temple tax gatherers wanted to question whether Jesus was a rabbi. What has happened is that they've seen that God, because they would have, if, if they saw somebody bring a, take a coin out of a fish's mouth like this, they would believe that that is provided by God. There is no doubt that the crowd would believe that this coin has been provided by God. He declares a number of things about himself in the action here. He declares, um, or God declares to, that, yes, he is a teacher. He declares, yes, he is my son. And it, it sort of just confirms who he is, confirms his ministry. And it's all because Jesus chose to be generous. But it also confirms something else. It confirms to Peter that God the Father is his provider through Jesus. I just think that this is the most exciting thing for us as believers to learn. That God, the Father, through Jesus, is our provider. And actually, we can, don't actually have to have the provision to make a choice to be generous. The choice to be generous comes without that. And we have to be very careful not to be affected by what we're giving to but look more to, to what God is able to do through our giving, if you see what I mean. It's very easy for me, and I quite often have the, a discussion with my, <laughs> my wife about the church, um, about giving to St. Catherine's. We see a lot of the money going into the building. We have to. And if I was looking at it and, and going, actually, what do I think? Well, I, I would prefer the money to go to mission. And David and I have had a similar discussion. We would prefer to see a much greater proportion of what is given to be going to mission. But Jesus is actually saying here, I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to ignore the fact that what I'm giving to is, is problematic. I'm going to choose to be generous. And I'm going to see what can, God can do through my generosity rather than questioning what I'm giving to. Does that sort of make sense? Am I sort of <laughs> ca catching a, what is that? Why is it important to think about this now? Because we're gonna get a new vicar. Do we really want a new vicar to come into a church situation where we pair, appear to be struggling and, and they can't do anything? So I, th I think the message that I'm trying to sort of get over to you is, okay, things are difficult at the moment because I'm sure through this period of time, you have difficulty and some of you will have very difficult situations financially. I don't doubt it, but that shouldn't affect the choice to be generous. The choice to be generous is separate to how, how much money I've got in my pocket. And they, you can then, ha having made that decision, say, oh, God, I want a heart that is generous. Show me how to be generous. Provide for me so that I can be generous. 
So the whole idea of having any provisions that through, by which you can be generous is not about you. It's about God and what God can do. I hope that all makes sense to you. Um, and I hope that we can lean into to generosity during Lent. And it may not mean that David gets more money in the coffers as a result of that. <laughs> because I'm not talking about you suddenly going to be able to give a lot, but just to get a generous heart and learn from what Jesus has done, that actually Jesus is essentially what has happened is a situation that could you could logically see, well, if I give into that, it's going to cause problems, but God used it for his glory. At the end of the day, God used the situation and used Jesus' generosity for his glory and to, to um, support his son and, uh, and confirm who he is to the people who were listening. I hope that helps. Amen. Thank you so much, David. That was really interesting and challenging. Thank you. Let's um let's just pray and reflect on those words that we've heard now. Mm. Lord, I'm just challenged as I hear those words of that Jesus reminds us that you cause the sun to shine on the righteous and on the unrighteous. You give your generous gifts to all of us, whether we're deserving or not. You don't stint, you just pour out good things upon your creation regardless of whether we're worthy recipients or not. You have an incredibly generous heart towards us, Lord. Uh, you sent your son to die for us while we were still your enemies. You didn't wait for us to sort ourselves out first. And Lord, we pray that you would show us how to take those challenging words to heart, how we can be generous to those around us, whether they are worthy or not. Generous with our time and attention and our love and generous with our money. And then Lord, the results of that, as it were, are in your hands. It, that's, that's not our concern, but our concern, Lord, is to, to use what you've given us in the way that you're calling us to. We just pray that you'd help us to reflect on those words, Lord, and hear what your spirit is saying to us. Lord, as we come to pray for the world around us as well we're grateful lord for so much that you've given us we're grateful lord for vaccines that we've been talking about earlier that we have access to medicines in this country lord thank you for everybody who's been working so hard volunteers and staff to to roll that out and we just want to say thank you for that lord for your provision and lord we pray for our leaders that they would make good decisions we think of the chancellor and the budget that's coming up this wednesday and lord we ask for our country that they would make wise and fair and good decisions lord that would support those in need in our country and lord be honoring to you and lord we pray for governments around the world who perhaps haven't got the same resources as our country and for peoples who don't have access to the vaccine and we pray lord that this would be a time when the world would work together as never before to see all those who are in need to receive what they need. Lord, I want to pray too for your church across this country and across the world as perhaps we look towards maybe reopening in the coming months as we look ahead to Easter. Lord, I pray that we would know your guidance and know how we can serve our communities at this time. I pray, Lord, that we'd know how we can connect with those we might have lost touch with over the last year in our congregations. I pray, Lord, that you just strengthen your church so that we can be a blessing to those around us. Lord, we lift up leaders to you, many of whom I suspect are feeling very tired and weary. Certainly the ones we speak to in work are feeling a bit overwhelmed by all that's happened over the last year. And for all of us, Lord, who are feeling that way, we pray, Lord, that your spirit would breathe among us, that would bring fresh life, Lord, And we pray for ourselves. We pray for ourselves and those we love. Maybe those who are grieving. Lord, those who live with ongoing pain. 
whether that's physical pain or emotional, mental pain. Lord, we lift them to you. You know the people we're thinking of in our hearts right now. And we lift them to you. We pray that through your spirit, you touch them today, Lord. Give them fresh hope and strength and healing, peace in their heart and mind, Lord, and awareness of your love. All that they need, Lord. For those who are troubled, we ask for your peace. For those who need guidance, we pray, Lord, that you'd show the way ahead. Mm -hmm. Lord, we just thank you so much that as your children, we can bring all these prayers to you and know that as our Father, you love to hear from us and you love to hear what's on our heart. We just thank you this morning. Mm. We pray together, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Andy's guessed that I'm heading over back to him now. <laughs> mm. I'll hand back over to Andy and Esther for our closing him. Thanks. Thank mm. you for those prayers. And um, as we look out the, the window and the gorgeous sunshine and the mountains, um, we're going to sing, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer, and give thanks to God for all that we have um, and, and, and worship him. Mm. so much thank you i thought um perhaps as we close i thought we could perhaps share together the affirmation of faith from the service of morning prayer let's try and be a bit adventurous here and see if i can share my screen let's see if that works and perhaps if you're great thank you and get the thumbs up from david that's helpful and if you'd like to join in the words in bold if you're happy to do that and let's offer this as a prayer and um speak these affirmations and invite God to move in our lives in the coming days in these ways and there might be one particular phrase that you just want to lift as a prayer to God that he would bring you the light or the way or the uh, the way of living the guidance that you need at this time so mm -hmm. let's say together Jesus said I am the light of the world your light, light drives, drives away, away the darkness. darkness I am the way the truth and the life your, your way, way brings, brings us true, true hope, hope. I am the resurrection and the life. You, you break, break the, the power, power of sin in our lives. I am the bread of life. You, you feed, feed us and fill our hunger. hunger. I am the true vine. Your, Your way of, of living, living becomes, becomes the pattern for, for us. I am the good shepherd. You, you guide, guide us and lead us on. 
Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you for being here this morning and thank you for the opportunity to share with you this morning. Thank you to David and to uh, Andy and Esther and for Trish and David. Lovely to see you hosting us again. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. We'll have a time of um, informal chat in small groups now as we normally do. So if you need to leave us, feel free to do that now and God bless you. Um, but otherwise, for those who are able to stay on, I'll ask Trish and David to perhaps put us in some smaller groups now and we can have a chat together. So thanks everybody. It's been lovely to see you all. Thank you.